Video game preservation has become a lot more important to me in recent years. With the Wii Shop channel shutting down before I was able to buy anything, and with Sony attempting to shut down the digital stores for the PS3 and Vita in 2021. One of the companies I've always been a big fan of is Nintendo, and unlike Sony, they're much less likely to be swayed by fan outcry. The eShops for the 3DS and Wii U are shutting down next year, so I wanted to talk about the whole situation and the timeline of the eShop shutdown, suggest some titles to pick up before prices increase further than they already have, and maybe even show some people how to get into collecting for the system if they're looking for some kind of guide. In the context of this, there are a couple of key dates. On the 16th of September 2020, Nintendo stopped producing brand new 3DS units. On the 16th of February 2022, Nintendo announced the shutdown of the 3DS and Wii U eShops on Twitter. As of the 23rd of May 2022, it was no longer possible to use credit cards to add funds to your 3DS and Wii U eShop balance. As of the 29th of August 2022, it will no longer be possible to use Nintendo eShop cards to add funds to your 3DS and Wii U eShop balance. And as of the 27th of March 2023, it will no longer be possible to make any purchases using your eShop balance even if it is shared between the 3DS, Wii U and Switch accounts. I've been a fan of Pokemon for years now. I started with Diamond and Pearl in 2006 and I'm looking forward to Scarlet and Violet this year. And one of my favourite parts of the games is bringing Pokemon forward to newer games. I especially like bringing my old teams forward and using them during the post game of newer games. It always reminded me of Ash using Pokemon from previous adventures during tournaments in the anime. But the eShop shutting down has made this much more difficult. Anything from generation 3 onwards can be transferred to the current generation games through various means. The journey goes like this. You transfer a Pokemon from a Game Boy Advance cartridge, let's say Emerald, by placing the game pack in the bottom of a Nintendo DS or DS Lite and going to the PAL park during the post game of a generation 4 game, let's say Platinum. You then go around the park and catch your transferred Pokemon, you can transfer up to 6 Pokemon every 24 hours. So now you want to transfer your team from Platinum to a Generation 5 game, let's say Pokemon Black. So you need to beat Pokemon Black and get to the Poker Transfer Lab. You then put the cartridge for Platinum in another DS and use DS Download Player to access a touchscreen mini game in which you catch your Pokemon with a catapult. Once again you could transfer up to 6 at a time but there's no limit to how many times you could do this in a day. And now you want to transfer from Pokemon Black to Generation 6, we'll say Pokemon Y. For this you need a 3DS as there are apps you need to download in order to transfer Pokemon to the 3DS games. So you go to the eShop and download the Pokemon Transporter along with Pokemon Bank and now you see the issue. The Pokemon Transporter and Pokemon Bank applications are necessary for transferring Pokemon between Generation 6 games, Generation 7 games, the Virtual Game Boy and Game Boy Color games, and Pokemon Home on the Switch and smartphones. Once the eShop closes, you won't be able to download any additional apps. Sure, Pokemon Bank will become a free service, but it won't be available to any fans who haven't played the games before. So that means all of the Pokemon from their games that released before the Switch games will be stranded on their old games. You won't be able to transfer them to newer titles, which is super annoying. So, the morale of this rant, download the Pokemon Bank and Transporter right now, like Pause this, open your 3DS, download the services, come back, continue with your day. So, a lot of people will probably be asking, what's the point in getting a 3DS when the Switch exists? Which is a fair question, they're both Nintendo handhelds, but due to the unique design of the 3DS with its two screens, it's very time consuming to port the games designed for the system to consoles that only use one screen. There are a few games available on Switch, like Monster Hunter Generations, Kirby Battle Royale, and Layton's Mystery Journey, but I don't see Nintendo deciding to put in the work to port that many 3DS games when they're so busy creating experiences tailor-made for the Switch or porting Wii U games, which is much easier. So, there are a bunch of experiences which are pretty much stuck on the 3DS which a ton of people will miss out on. So, you've decided to get a 3DS but don't actually know what to play on it. I have a list of titles that I recommend, and before I start this section, I want to say that these suggestions are entirely opinionated, so feel free to leave any games you think I should have included below. So starting from the top we have the mainline Pokemon games. You have X and Y, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, Sun and Moon, and Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon to choose from. They're all in 3D and introduce new things like the Fairy type, Mega Evolutions, Z moves and Island Trials. They're fun games, all with their own strengths and weaknesses. If you don't know where to start, I'd say Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire as they have a good amount of content as well as some of the best music in the entire series. Super Mario 3D Land, the predecessor to Super Mario 3D World available on Wii U and Switch. It's a fun blend of 2D and 3D Mario games and one of the only games on the 3DS to take full advantage of the 3D feature without outright needing it. The level structure of the game makes it perfect to just pick up and play. Dragon Ball Fusions, an RPG where you create your own custom character and travel through worlds to recruit characters from the series to join your team and fight enemies. You're able to fuse any characters in the game so you don't have to wonder what a fusion between Goku and Bardock would look like. You can also perform five-person fusions, which is a really cool idea and a fun mechanic. 
The Legend of Zelda games. A Link Between Worlds was received incredibly well by fans and is a top-down Zelda game which involves traversing dimensions and walking in walls. Triforce Heroes wasn't received as well as A Link Between Worlds, but it's another entry in the series so I thought I'd include it here. There are full remakes of Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask which are major improvements of the originals on N64. Just play Hyrule Warriors on Switch or Wii U, it'll perform much better on those consoles. Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D. While it was originally released on the Wii, the 3DS part of Donkey Kong Country Returns is arguably the best way to experience the game. The visuals may have taken a hit, but you're able to play the game with actual button controls rather than having to shake the Wii remote up and down to move, so I'd say it's a fair trade. Tomodachi Life a text-to-speech life simulation game where you make memes out of the people you know and live out a life where anything can happen. It hasn't received any sequels or parts, so it's an interesting experience only available on 3DS. Kirby Planet Robobot One of the best Kirby games to ever exist, it's a change from the traditional Kirby format and it was hailed by many as the best Kirby game of all time. While this sentiment has changed for some people with the release of Forgotten Land, it's still held pretty high by most fans. There are obviously a lot more physical games that you should pick up, but I can't talk about them all at length, otherwise I'll be here forever and I'm lazy. So here are a few honourable mentions. Animal Crossing New Leaf, Rhythm Thief and the Emperor's Treasure, Metroid Samus Returns, Luigi's Mansion 2, Super Smash Bros. 4 for 3DS, Kid Icarus Uprising, and there's a ton of Fire Emblem stuff. Obviously, with the eShop shutting down, the digital-only games will be completely unavailable, so here are a few titles to pick up before that happens. Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, Dual Destinies, and Spirit of Justice. Full Phoenix Wright games are exclusive to the eShop, so they won't be available after March. The Box Boy series, some puzzle platformers from the Kirby devs, Pokemon Dream Radar, a cool AR game in which you can get the Ethereum forms of Tornadus, Thunderous and Landorus. Pokedex 3D Pro. Pokemon Virtual Console games including Red, Blue, Yellow, Gold, Silver, Crystal and the Trading Card game. Pokemon Bank and Transporter as per my earlier rant. The Mario vs Donkey Kong series. Smash Controller for Wii U. You can use your 3DS as a controller in Smash 4 on the Wii U. It's cheap and I just think it's cool. Chibi Robo Photo Finder or Let's Go Photo, depending on where you live. I swear Chibi Robo Ziplash isn't the only Chibi Robo game available on this console. When the DSi shop shut down, a lot of DSiWare titles were transferred to the 3DS eShop, so they're in danger once again. So pick them up if you're interested. Some titles include Photo Dojo, WarioWare Snapped, and Mario vs Donkey Kong The Minis Match Again. Okay, so you know what 3DS games you want to play, but you don't know what 3DS model is for you. I wasn't going to go this far on the topic to not talk about which 3DS model is right for you, so here we go. The 3DS family is split into two separate categories. You have the original release of older consoles including the 3DS, 3DS XL and 2DS. And there are the new consoles which are more powerful and have other features. These are the new 3DS, new 3DS XL, and new 2DS XL. All of the consoles can play all DS and original 3DS games. There are some games exclusive to the new 3DS as they require more powerful systems to run properly. These include Minecraft New Nintendo 3DS Edition and Xenoblade Chronicles 3D. The original consoles cannot play SNES virtual console games and can't read amiibo figures without an external NFC reader. Nintendo made these readers but they're quite difficult to get nowadays, so that's something to keep in mind. The the original 3DS is likely one of the cheaper models available. The 3DS XL has larger screens but can feel a bit cheap and plasticky. The 2DS is the only console to feature a slate-like design rather than a clamshell design, which makes it the sturdiest console in the family as well as the cheapest by far. It doesn't include any kind of 3D capabilities, which may sound odd, but it really doesn't take that much away from the experience. The new 3DS line of systems has a lot more variety between models. All models are compatible with Amiibo without the use of a reader and are able to play SNES virtual console games. The new 3DS features swappable face plates, which means you can swap the look of your system anytime, although face plates and the system have become quite expensive recently. The new 3DS XL is probably the most expensive out there but features larger screens than the new 3DS. There are also a lot of cool special editions. And then there's the new 2DS XL, the newest model. Once again, it's more powerful than the original line of systems and has no 3D capabilities. However, it comes with the smaller stylus and the speaker placement is really bad as they're on the bottom of the system where your palms are while playing. Although this can be mitigated by using headphones. Another thing to note with the new 3DS systems is that some models can come with IPS screens. All of the original models as well as the new 2DS XL are guaranteed to come with TN panel screens, which are lower quality panels than the IPS panels. IPS panels provide you with more consistent viewing angles as the picture doesn't become as distorted at angles. There's no way to tell whether a system has an IPS screen until you actually use it and it's only available for the new 3DS and new 3DS XL. While it doesn't take anything away from the overall experience, it's definitely something to consider if you're really interested in having the best experience possible and money isn't an issue for you. 
once again, I have a random section of the video to throw in at the end because I couldn't think of anywhere to put it. I just wanted to go through some of the cool limited edition 3DS consoles because the designs are really cool. When it comes to the original 3DS, the best one I found was the Zelda 25th Anniversary Edition. The 3DS XL has some really nice designs like the Pokemon X and Y models and the Zelda Triforce design. There were some translucent 2DS models released alongside Pokemon games like Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire along with red, blue and yellow on the virtual console. The new 3DS doesn't really have any special editions because you can swap the face plates out, but I just like the Pokemon red and blue plates. The new 3DS XL has a lot of cool special editions, my personal favourites were the Samus edition for Metroid Samus Returns and the Pokemon Sun and Moon edition. And the new 2DS XL had some really cool designs that were textured like the Pokeball design, Hylian Shield and Creeper edition that was released alongside Minecraft for new Nintendo 3DS. This video isn't intended to make people panic and start buying 3DS consoles and games. I just wanted to look back at the 3DS and suggest some games to people who may not have experienced them yet. I wanted to make a guide that anyone can use if they're interested in getting into the 3DS library and don't know where to start. With the impending shutdown of these digital storefronts, I'm a little sad. It's genuinely disappointing to think that future generations won't be able to fully explore these libraries and some experiences will be completely lost. I know that console generations have passed before and games have stopped being printed, but there haven't been generations where there's so much content only available on digital stores. The current situation proves that game preservation is important now more than ever, which is why seeing these huge companies shutting down digital stores and not making the content available anywhere else is really disheartening. Okay, that's all the time I've got. I gotta get back to playing Animal Crossing New Leaf on my Nintendo 3DS.